So I got James Laronitis here, the guy who used to yell at me a lot. Uh, and now he's on the radio. He's on 97 won the fan Bishop and Laurenitis for your drive home in Columbus. That's so interesting because he just did say Bishop and Laurenitis and then your dear friend, you go James Laurenitis. He's the only person that can call me that. Like he, he's, I've told him over and over it's Laurenitis, but, uh, I guess when you're Chris Long, you just do what you want anyway. Well, so I make it easy for you Laronitis. guys. It's really fucking easy for everybody to pronounce my name. Like, really easy. So you just bear with me. How often do you hear Laronitis, James? A lot. A lot. I've I, actually grown up, um, I'll never forget this, was playing hockey, and uh, we were in some tournament, and they were doing starting lineups, as you do in Minnesota high school hockey. And so the guy was like, James, Lauren, Lauren. James L. I give him credit. I give him credit. At least he just did said the hell with this. And so that was, I'll never forget that one. Cause I laughed skating out to the blue line. Well, I finally learned how to spell it. Uh, and I'm really good at it, but yeah, I'm working on the, the pronunciation as well. James, uh, I want to start with this Quinn. How do we say his name? Ewers. Ewers. Why is it spelled that way? Like Patrick Ewing. You've okay, had some got practice. It. Okay, got it, one, got yeah. it. Quinn Ewers, the kid, he's he's going to be a Buckeye. He's coming out a year early, I guess, uh, and he's getting paid, essentially. Uh, yeah. First off, the NIL stuff in general, how do you think it's gone the first month or two? And then with this high school kind of consideration that we now have, how do you think that affects college football in the landscape? Yeah, I think, I think initially it's kind of been um, – the wild west when it comes to nil there's just there's no leadership from the ncaa and so at first it seemed like all of these states right that were passing laws for it like georgia and, and everyone that's kind of out ahead of it seemed like oh they were gonna have a distinct advantage and then the ncaa comes along and says you know what there's actually if you have a law follow the law if not make up your own rules and so now it's like if you don't have a law you kind of have straight freedom with what you're going to do in in college and how you're going to police it Chris, I think, I think right now everyone's trying to feel it all out. I know Ohio state specifically has dropped certain guidelines here and there about, um, kind of what's a fee to use the Woody Hayes athletic center where they practice for the football. Can't wear any of your Ohio state officially licensed stuff. Obviously they're a Nike school, so you can't wear under armor, all those little details, but it's interesting. And we all want to focus on the guy who's going to be like, who's the first million dollar college football player to me, that's not it. It's, it's what's the, you know, old lineman that can get a free pickup truck to drive around. You know, these deals are great for all these kids. I just think there will be a little bit of a settling period as this thing lengthens out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, like we've all seen the videos we've seen, like heard the anecdotes, like down in Miami, the gym that paid every kid a few thousand dollars for, for just being on the team. And then BYU the other day, (laughs) Some uh, nutrition or supplement? Was it a supplement? Built. It was built protein, I think. Yeah, dude. Uh, freaking wa- the guy walked in and he was just the rainmaker. He did one yeah. scholarship for a walk on, and then two, <laughs> and then it was like everybody stand up. I feel it was like Oprah. I, I, you get a scholarship. You get a yeah, scholarship. Yeah, it was you Oprah. Get- <laughs> it was Oprah, dude. But I just like at the end of the day, I, so far it's going to be hard to to kind of like you said. There's a settling period, but. My big concern going in, if I had any, was like, man, I hope the little people get paid too. And so yeah. far, that's been the case. I mean, at least in bigger schools, they've they've been getting paid. But when you talk about a high school kid getting paid senior year, what exactly go- is going on with Quinn Ewers? And kind of explain that for people that might not have heard about this. Yeah, so I, I guess what he was trying to do was get, obviously, capitalized on his name, image, likeness. He was very popular, number one recruit in that class. We're supposed to be next year. And Texas does not let their high school football players capitalize on their own name, image, and likeness, I guess. So he he was for a while trying to say, Hey, look, I can go to college and do this. I'm the quarterback of South Lake Carroll. Let me capitalize on, I want to be, he wanted to stay in high school. Essentially he wanted to be a high schooler and to go through senior year, which is awesome. You know, when you think about to your high school days, he just couldn't make money on it. And so for him, he waited with his family and said, okay, I can go to Ohio state reclassify finish up some classes, which I don't know about you. I never had the academic prowess to just say, Hey, I could graduate a year yeah. early and just, you know, last minute kind of skip there, but he was able to get it done. And so I know he has the Holy kombucha, which he already, uh, advertised for, which must be delicious. I want some, be. and then t- two, um, there's, there's, 
you know, a truck company here that's giving them a truck, I'm sure they'll pay them for appearances throughout the year. What's interesting, Chris, is that they've had three guys battling for this job all through spring ball. And now the fall, I think CJ Stroud will be their starter. He hasn't been named yet, but he has a leg up according to coach day. And he's taken most of the first team reps. But if you're Quinn Ewers, you made this decision to reclassify go early. What if CJ Stroud's a dude? Like what if he ends up being all big 10 this year? And then he's the starting quarterback at Ohio state for the next two years. Are people still going to be trying to pay Quinn Ewers as a backup in the future? It's a very interesting timeline. They have basically four guys now that are freshmen because of the NCAA waiving last year's eligibility with COVID. So they have four guys that technically could claim their freshmen and uh, it makes it for a very interesting QB battle. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. You know, with the transfer portal stuff and you know, now with this, it's going to be hard especially in log jam type positions to kind of forecast like who's going to be playing football for your favorite team at times. I got to say, I did not peg this kid for a guy who could graduate a year early or what have you uh, with the, the blonde mullet. I'm a guy with a mullet. The mullet's incredible. A the mullet's incredible. Mullet, but this guy is a fucking creative player. I mean, he's an incredible <laughs> cat. I'm really, really happy that uh, the kombucha is probably great. James, what would you have uh, endorsed back in the day? You could have been on some tattoo ads. I paid for my tattoos for one. Um, <laughs> some would say I paid too much for them, but I paid I paid for them. Um, I think they're great. I, I think they're great for the record. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. And I got most of them actually when, when I was in St. Louis, but I, I did hear that from everybody. Um, I'll never forget meeting an Alabama player one time and being like, I can't believe they punished you over tattoos. And he was like, if they only knew, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah, my God. I was like, oh, I, whatever. Um, I, I just look the, I think for one, you know, the animal would have had his hands all over everything. Oh, for I sure. mean, he would have had his hands all over our guy. I think there's a couple of things that I'm thankful weren't around the NIL when I played. Um, although we could have definitely benefited off it. You could have as well. But I think for me, it was the fact that Twitter wasn't around when I was in college and all these podcasts, because like right now we have all these parents at Ohio state that will go on podcasts or like become guests for like these, you know, recruiting podcasts and all this. And they'll go talk. And I'm like, man, I can't imagine my dad would have been on there for sure. Talking about, I need the blitz more all, you know, (laughs) just like random stuff that wouldn't have needed to be, you know, talked about Yeah, and just been an, it would have been a headache, but, um, well, gosh, what it's, would we, it's funny. I probably, I probably would have endorsed some protein powder. You definitely would have been a protein powder guy. For sure, you'd have been a protein powder guy. <laughs> I just, uh, or maybe like Affliction. We were all into Affliction teas back we were. then. There are some pictures we of were. you and I. Like, we could pull them out of the, the, the files. I'm not proud. I'm not yeah, proud either. Not proud. You shouldn't be. There's a picture of you My and Malcolm. My poor daughters. There's a, <laughs> there's a picture of you and Malcolm in front of a, some sports car in like you right. know, giant uh, bedazzled cross t-shirts. Uh, that's you, right. Yeah, that's I mean, right. so listen, we all had, and I wore Ed Hardy, <laughs> Ed Hardy, we all had bad phases with that. Is James potentially going through a phase at present? Uh, it appears to be a Notre Dame hat on your head. Oh, it is, it is. So my best friend in college, Marcus Freeman, was a D coordinator at Cincinnati for the last, what, three years, and then he just took the D.C. job at uh, Notre Dame. So I texted him, you know, a couple months ago, and I said, hey, man, I just need some free swag. And they sent me a box of, like, you know, six hats and this bunch is of shirts. really interesting. And this is a brilliant segue into something I wanted to ask him. So you're okay with wearing Notre Dame stuff out in public? Oh, I do. And people get really confused around here. Really confused. Because they're if, like, wait. It's really confusing. What if your guy about? becomes the head coach at the University of Michigan? There's only certain boundaries that you look. look yeah. There's there are certain yeah. limitations to it. I think, honestly, I think that's a possibility. Um, now, would he take it or not? I, my gut says he'd definitely entertain it. I mean, if Michigan, the kind of money that they throw around, I think he would definitely look into it. I think it's, if you're an Ohio state fan, you don't want that to happen. I think there's two names you don't want to happen. If you want things to keep going the way they are, Matt Campbell at Iowa state, yeah. um, who rumor is he's still somewhat salty. He didn't even get considered when they hired Ryan day. He's from Ohio. And then Marcus Freeman, because Marcus Freeman has shown to be one of the best recruiters in the nation. And yet he knows also Ohio and, kind of would have those ties. So Harbaugh hasn't been able to really recruit Ohio, uh, which has always been a a key to their success. And if you're an Ohio State fan, you want it to stay that way. But personally, I would would love for him to get that opportunity. What an awesome opportunity that would be. I want to double back to the NIL thing just for a second. The implications are 
or many here with the NIL stuff. I think it's a positive though. You just said, I want to push back a little bit. You said you'd rather it not have been, you know, in effect. I'm saying it would have caused me a lot of stress because I know how much my father would have wanted to, you know, dual appearances, stuff like that, you know? And so look, my dad was a self promoter in in the (laughs) WWF. So that's what they did for a living. That's what they did for a living. So it's not a (laughs) terrible thing. Um, I just, I just think uh, it would have been an added layer. I'm all for it for the yeah, kids now. Yeah. I, I think it's positive. I think, you know, these, um, as you, we've all seen it in locker rooms. I think there's going to be a lot of families that might get stressed out on these things, yeah. you know, with just higher, higher, smart representation, know that taxes will come and you'll get to learn at 18, 19, 20 versus learning when you get to the league. Best defensive player in the country. I, I that conversation, uh, I'm, uh, I'm on the outside looking in. I just know this Kayvon Thibodeau guy. Thibodeau, like I, yeah. I, t- I turned on a, an Oregon game last year, not having watched them all year, and it took me five minutes to say who the fuck is number nine. Yeah. You know what I mean? So who's yeah. who's who's in the running to be the best defensive player of the year or any of those guys in the Big Ten? Well, I think he is. Uh, the guy the guy from Oregon that you mentioned. Is it Thibodeau? Thibodeau? Yeah, yeah we're, we're working on it. We're This is in the T- bad name day. Thibodeau. I don't know. Thibodeau. Oh, yeah? That's what I thought. Yeah. I thought it was Thibodeau. Uh, yeah. You can always go to um, Macon. He knows everybody's <laughs> name. I, I, so I'm obviously excited to see him play Ohio State, but it's not just the, the matchup. It's the fact that he's going against scouts will love it too. Uh, Thayer Munford and Nicholas Petit Ferrer, who are right. both all Big Ten tackles. Um, although there have been talk about moving. They have this kid here, Dewan Jones, who's like six, seven, three thirty, who's was a basketball player. So they want to put him at tackle Mumford at guard. Anyway, they're messing around with the O line, but Ferrer was the number one tackle in the country coming out and, and what an awesome NFL scout matchup with Thibodeau and him going back oh, and yeah. forth. And, um, I, I, I think he is the best and has the highest, uh, I think ceiling, you know, for a scout term, as far as guys out there, he, he still, I think, has a lot to improve on. You would know more than me as a DM, but there's just something there's something there to where you're like, he just jumps off the screen. Oh yeah. And and you can notice it. But I think he's the best player in America on defense. Um, so as far as you know, here locally, there's there's a lot of guys in the Big Ten. I think there's a safety at Northwestern, Brandon Joseph, who is legit. Um, he was uh gosh, all over the place last year in a very limited season. Uh, he's a guy though to watch out for. There's a kid at Ohio State who I think he will rise up a bunch of boards. His name is Zach Harrison. He's a DN. He was a number one DN coming out a couple of years ago out of uh, Olentangy up here in, in Ohio, north of Columbus. But he is a guy that when you see him, you know, work out in shorts and all that, he's getting de- developed by Larry Johnson, who has obviously has the Bosa's and Chase Young and all them. And they keep saying they expect him to kind of make that sort of leap this year. We'll see. But um you know, as far as around the big 10, then there's a kid like Brandon Smith linebacker at Penn state. Who's really explosive. Uh, Penn state always has dudes that yeah. at LB that can, that can play. How about the gunner uh, at Jason UA? Is it Jason? Oh, Jason Oway. Oway. Yeah. Jason Oway. Golly yeah. dude. Jason Oway. Jo- Jason Oway was a gunner the other day in preseason. He's 250 pounds, <laughs> dude. Yeah. Like yeah. Wh- what are they doing up there? And by the way, Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, where's number five, by the way, number nine, though, what's the single digit D lineman is your guy at Ohio state, the defensive end. Yeah. Zach Harrison. Yep, yep. Zach Harrison. Yep. They're just dudes, man. You know, when you have swag like that, you can I rock guess, a single digit. I just never could do it. It's like, I hey. tried to, I tried to at Ohio state. I tried to get three. Oh, um, yeah, okay. true story. I wore three in high school. And so then, I tried to get three and they were like, no, uh, you're a three star from Minnesota. There's a five star Jamario O'Neal from Cleveland Glenville. He gets to choose first. I said, okay, he can have three. Uh, and then I was like, how about 52? They're like, no, we have this freshman all American, John Kerr coming over from Indiana transfer. He'd already took 52. I said, okay. And they're like, how about 36? Now I didn't watch Ohio state growing up. I didn't know that 36 was like Spielman, Tom Cousineau. <laughs> like there's some dudes that rocked 36 at Ohio state. <laughs> And I'm like, 36? No, like 36 is weak. I was like, take, give me 33. <laughs> <laughs> so I took 33. I had no idea the history of 36 here. I think it would have looked a lot weirder if you were like, give me 36. It's like walking into, you know, the Giants building and asking for 56. Not that you can wear it anymore. The futures odds. We, we pulled up a couple from uh, WinBet. The futures odds to win the, the Big Ten here. Ohio State's minus 155, so they're big favorites. Any of these other teams have a chance, or do you seek 
any value in these bets like Wisconsin four to one, Penn State nine to one, Iowa ten to one, and Michigan twenty to one. Any of these teams have an outside chance, or you guys just have it on lock? And if so, which one has the best value? I think I think Ohio State has it on lock. It really it, it is a separation. Um, I was reading through some stuff the other day, just trying. I try to get a very well-rounded perspective on the conference because obviously when you're just, when you live in Columbus, all your, it's like an echo chamber here with the Buckeyes. But I was reading some stuff in the athletic the other day and there were so many guys just kind of saying, who's the player of the year in the big 10. It was like, whoever starts at Ohio state for right. Like, it's just, you know what I mean? It doesn't even matter. It could be any three of the kids. And I think that's kind of the way that, that a lot of people view the conference this year. I, if I had to go out on, and you said, Hey, you can't pick the Buckeyes. Who are you taking? I'd probably take Wisconsin. Um, it's tough because when, when you're some of these brands in the big 10, you can lose a game early on. Like the conference has done a good job this year of scheduling these games, but like Wisconsin and Penn state play each other week one. Oh, wow. So whoever loses that game could just basically say, well, they're done. Like if Penn state loses, people are gonna say, Oh, Penn state was bad last year. You know, they had the, one of their worst seasons of record last year. It wasn't a fluke. They're bad. If right. Wisconsin loses, the, the narrative will be, well, Wisconsin, see, they can't beat teams in the big 10 East. They're, they can only win the West side, the weaker side of the division. It's the same with Indiana, Indiana, Iowa play. That'll be a 17 versus 18 game. I, I believe it. Indiana might be the, the score they have, too, right? Yeah, but it could be, but I think with Indiana, if that logo has a Michigan logo next to it with the same roster, like they're a preseason, you know, 10 or 11. Yeah. But the fact that like no one really respects the Hoosiers and that, oh, that's their own fault. They haven't been great in football. Listen, but, you just walked me into something I really wanted to ask you. And when you had the Notre Dame hat on earlier, it, it, I was like, oh shit, because the super fan still has it on. He still has it on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Golden yeah. Domer here. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so free. I like free stuff. Man. Yeah. Well, I like free stuff too, but not that much. Now, if this is the rule, that's a good question. We can settle it after we get off with James. If we have carte blanche now, who are we wearing? Um, give it a second. Save it. I'm not saying. Okay. okay. Indiana, that coach there. I watched him pumping up his team in training camp yesterday on Twitter. Now, I know all coaches are performers. They know the mic's on. They know the camera's on. Now, it's been a part, It's becoming a part of being a college football coach that you have to, like, perform. But I don't think this guy's a performer. I buy his shit, mm -hmm. and I like him, and I want to go play football. I almost wanted to go play football for Indiana yesterday. And I'm wondering, yeah. is that sacrilege for me to share his motivational speech because I go to – I went to Virginia – and no. you know, like, so where do you land on that? Yeah. Like pumping up other coaches at other programs. No, I'm fine with that. Like I, the way I see it is you won't see me wearing any other big 10 stuff, but like in my eyes, Notre Dame's independent. Um, they're I'm supporting a friend. Mm. Like if you send me some Virginia stuff, I'll rock VA. Really? Stuff all you would day. rock Virginia like, yeah, stuff? Absolutely. Okay. No question. We won't rock Ohio um, state stuff, but you can send, <laughs> we'll send you some Virginia when it comes to Tom Allen is I love Tom Allen. Yeah, he's well, legit. We tell he's me why, too. tell me why he's legit and why he's authentic. Well, for one, this quote, well, I, I loved hearing this quote. Uh, it was from this off season when he was D coordinator there, he goes, it used to make me cringe when we used to break it down on big 10 champs. He's like, because we were terrible. Like we, he goes, we didn't have a chance of being fifth in the big 10 East. Yeah. And so when I got the head job, he's like, I told him like, we're not breaking it down. Like we haven't earned the right to think that that's where we're at. Like mm -hmm. we need to, we need to climb. We need to produce. We need to do all that. It's been the same motto and the way he started back on year one to where he is now, it's been the same guy. Like he was this, he was this much of a madman before <laughs> they were even a trendy thing last year. Right. Like he's yeah. not a guy that's like all of a sudden he's coming up with this great, these great quotes and all this. It's always been about, um, he, he's going to, I mean, think, I think love is one of the main characteristics of his, uh, of his program. He believes that like, if the guys know that you truly care for them and love them, they will run through a wall for you. That's why you see him genuinely excited. Whenever a guy makes a big play, yeah. it's not, it's not fake. Yeah. There are some others in the conference. I won't name names <laughs> that I think, are a little more theatrical. Let's I think stay here for, for him, it's second. authentic. Let's stay here for a second. Some others in the conference. James, would you say love is love? That's your slogan. That's <laughs> his slogan. At least he knows. But some others in the conf in the conference. He's talking about Michigan. <laughs> I'm not talking about. I, I don't mean, think there's, he's there's solely like... talking about Michigan. When I see PJ Fleck row the boat, <laughs> I want to vomit. <laughs> 
and drown everybody in the ocean. I just want to. I want to fill the field with vomit. <laughs> like this is disgusting uh, visual, but it's also uh, disgusting to hear row the boat. I'm just so I'm not into rowing the boat. Well, follow up. Did you do you know what Tom Allen how he did break it down? Was it improvement, guys, on three? <laughs> I don't, I don't, but I, I know. <laughs> but James is right, though. Wait, no, you're totally right. Totally right. He's so right, because, like, I can't tell you how many times in training camp we broke it down on some stupid shit that was just totally oh, unrealistic. We'd be like, NFC West champs. I'm like, y'all, we were. Let's start we were with. Not, can we start with winning record? Yeah. That'd be great. Eight yeah. and eight. Uh-huh. Can we Super Bowl. That? Super Bowl on three. Like, you'll be in an individual period, and some new guy will be like, it's his turn to break it down, and he goes, Super Bowl on three, and everybody's like, dude. <laughs> Look around. Uh, I know you just yeah. got here, but <laughs> how about other how about other conferences, James? You know, SEC it's competitive, but we we have a feeling there. Uh, ACC yeah. it's competitive, I guess, but we have a feeling there. Pac-12, Big 12. Is there anybody unexpected that can that can come out of those two conferences? Well, so when you say I guess unexpected, um would USC be unexpected? I, I, the way I look at the Pac-12 is like it's USC or Oregon. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think either would be really unexpected. Uh, the Big Twelve, I think it, 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 Oklahoma to me senses like to me this year is like okay, they have Spencer Rattler, which there's a lot of hype, and, and obviously for good reason, he's good, but he also got benched last season, so like there are still some growth things with him uh, that hopefully he has kind of grown grown through throughout the off season and. But it kind of feels like, all right, Oklahoma, like if you're going to win it, you're the one with the quarterback coming back. Alabama's got a new guy. Clemson has a new guy. Ohio State's a new guy, which I think it speaks to how top heavy college football is that those three schools that I just mentioned all have a new quarterback yeah. and no one's blinking about putting them in the playoff. UNC is interesting to me. I mean, you would know probably you are ACC more, but like just Mac Brown, Sam Howell, the quarterback, does, US, does UNC have enough to be able to beat Clemson, you know, no. a couple times no. they don't have enough time. I don't to think so. Product. I mean, it's a fair question, but like because they definitely. You asked have... me for unexpected. No, no, That's no. I'm thing, not shitting on your answer because you're fishing for 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 somebody that could make a run, and like they're really exciting. They're fun to watch. Yeah. I know that you coined them as being a women's soccer, women's soccer school. Um, they are dominant there, right? They are yeah. dominant there, and we should give them credit where credit's due. And uh, a 500 Virginia team put up 44 on them That's last the year. That's the problem. That's the problem. Clemson will score 70 points on those guys. Yeah. And, like, good yeah. luck keeping up. And I really like Sam Howell, and I really like what Mac Brown's done there. I think uh, a lot of people expected him to be more of the same. But, you know, Texas, the whole thing was, was underperforming, and now he's overperforming uh, at UNC. So... Yeah, no, they're, they're exciting, but you're right. What about conference realignment in the Pac-12 and in the Big 12? And with everything going on right now, uh, are we going to see like super conferences? Is that the chalky answer? What's James Laronitis' magic wand kind of answer? Yeah, well, I think I think something that was magic wand answer. I think something that was um, unique. We had an Oklahoma guest on. We were going through the Big Twelve um, on our show, and he had said, he asked him like, why? So why does Oklahoma leave? You know, we everyone thought Texas would go, but why Oklahoma? And they said the reason why Oklahoma left was that they had a really hard time selling out home games, and I think that's a real that's a real issue. Like, you want to be a part of the best conference in college football in the SEC. But like when you're Oklahoma, you're looking at the schedule, like who else besides Oklahoma State's a rivalry, right? It's Bedlam, but but who else? Baylor at home? Is that really selling out? Is that driving up attendance? And they found that it wasn't. And yeah. so now the, uh, the idea is we have a whole SEC schedule that, that we can sell out. We can obviously sell this to the TV stations, all that. The interesting thing, when I was out in Phoenix uh, with Fox, you know, uh, Big Ten Network's owned by Fox. So when we were out there looking at the numbers, like the top 10 games in the Big 12 are all include Texas or Oklahoma. Outside of that, there's not one game yeah. that anybody wants on a network. Mm -hmm. And so that's the struggle of the Big 12. I, th I think the scheduling alliance you hear between the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, the ACC, th that's about getting more eyeballs to the screen. Um there's a big number about really the 4 million viewers is where networks really want to pay for pay money for these schools to, to get, to draw that attention. I just think the big 10 missed the boat. They missed their opportunity. The big 10 was flirting with Texas and Oklahoma. 
back when they expanded with Nebraska, they wanted to bring them in and try to, you know, bring Nebraska some, some help. And there was kind of some kind of snafu with the, I don't know, some AAU academic standard and Oklahoma wasn't a part of this club and the big 10 passed on them because of it, which Nebraska was. And then Nebraska dropped that academic standard a couple of years later. So oh. all this like really dumb stuff. Right. And so if you're the big 10, the only way you can try to counter this play is to try to convince, which they won't, because I don't think Notre Dame wants anything to do with the big 10 it's convinced Notre Dame to join and then get literally any other team. It doesn't even matter who else joins the conference. Notre Dame's poll, as far as a a TV, money, brand, it's all there. But Notre Dame, if you're them, you've been flirting with the Big Ten for decades. You already have a West Coast present because you play USC. And so now you're flirting with the ACC and you're expanding all down the East. Like, why would you join the Big Ten? Right. You don't need to. So I I think everyone's kind of stuck trying to – I think over the last two years, we've seen the, the shift of like, at least up here, everyone assumed the Big Ten was in charge and they would kind of set the tone of college football, the Big Ten network. And they yeah. started, you know, the money, like they basically, when everyone started looking around and said, hold on, Purdue makes 50 million a year on a television deal. Like, how do we kind of catch up to that? It Now it's flipped with the SEC pushing through last year and playing the first conference to kind of say, no, we're going to go through and play to now making this power move. I think the SEC is leading the way in college ball. So you said Notre Dame and possibly, which would never happen, but possibly another team would be the slam dunk. Like who would you culturally think is actually a fit for the big 10? I mean, that's a tough, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, because I'm not sure as far as like standards and all those things, like so many people have different views on who that would be. Some people want to make it a national conference and go after Oregon and USC. I'm like, okay, that's, you can do that in football, but there's more than like, we know that there's more sports than just football. Yeah. And they got to travel. Yeah. yeah, You got to travel for the, yeah. Fucking volleyball Um, teams got to board a bus to LA. Like (laughs) fucked up. So yeah. Now, now give Um, me one team you would boot from the big 10. Oh, I know, but I want to hear what he has to say. This is tough, man. I work for the Big Ten Network, and you're putting me on on that spot. I know, but like you can, um, I don't know. We'll bleep it. We'll bleep it out. On three. One, two, three. Maryland. Maryland. Ah! <laughs> I want to boot it. You want, we got Maryland to keep Penn State from going to the ACC. Uh, Penn State was flirting with the ACC, and they said, no, hold on. We got to help Penn State out. Let's add Maryland. And then they're like, oh, well, we, let's grab Rutgers because it's year. technically close to New York. Yeah. You know, like when you go to Rutgers facility and they have the New York skyline, they're like, it's right behind like their open end of the stadium. Yeah. And then when you get to the press box and you're like, hold on, <laughs> I can't see New York. Where is New, York? New York? I don't see New York. I don't see a cornfield. Like what the, no. I'm not in the big 10. I'm not in the big apple. What is this? Like what's going on here? So yeah, uh, let's close with some fun stuff. We've oh. just interrogating him on college football. Did you had butt Chuck Cecil? I have had butt Chuck Cecil with a helmet on. He did not have a helmet. I tried to tell him how this goes, dude, bro, bro. Chuck, Chuck would come headbutt you. And then he'd just be like, like, Chuck, you're bleeding. You're bleeding. He headbutt us before the games. He would, he would, we, you'd make eye contact with him. And he'd, he'd basically say, come here and grab you by the bottom of your chin strap to, to accelerate the headbutt and pull you into his head. And then yeah. you look over and he was fucking bleeding. And if you've never seen Chuck <laughs> Cecil play football, it, like, like you don't get it. But if you have, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck, sometimes that was the hardest that I would get hit all game was Chuck's For headbutt. Sure. Well, it was, a it was our headbutt too. We used our to headbutts, do one headbutt. But as we aged, we had as we aged, down. it didn't get, it didn't get as intense. Like when we were young, it was like, Oh, let's you know bend our face masks. As we got older, it was like okay. Well, as we I got older, our ritual. and the movie Concussion came out, I think that was a pretty right. solid turning point for us, like softening That's those right. pregame head headbutts. James, what's your version of the cricket story? Ooh. You know, I was just really focused on trying to make our team better, Thanks. and you know, watching tape, and uh, it was a long day. I remember going and and eating food in our basketball court slash dining slash racquetball room at, at Rams park multi-purpose and, and left to the parking lot thinking, man, I'm tired and I cannot wait to get home to my wife, you know? And, uh, it's been a long day. Sure. sure. 
And uh, so I go out there and I'm like, where's my car? You know, that's, I don't know where it is. And so then I (laughs) find out that it's in the indoor facility. And so I have to walk around the cheerleaders. It's wrapped, you know, (laughs) and saran wrap. Cheerleaders were there. Yeah. And then I had to, you know, I cut through it all. And I'm like, ha ha, very funny guys thinking, you know, that's pretty good. Um, and then all the packaging peanuts come out. I'm like, Oh, this is even funnier. But then I just felt bad for silky because I knew at that point in time, my attitude was I'm going to dump all of this into the turf and I'm not picking these packaging peanuts up. So whoever the crew is picking it up or my man, our man silk there, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah, so I felt bad for him. Typical. And then the, cr- and then I heard the crickets. And that's when I was like, you got to be kidding me. And then there's a good friend of mine, Chris Long, who says, you know what? I'll give you a ride home. This is ridiculous. I actually paid Silk to clean it. So I get a ride home. That's that. And I, I, then I really got on a hunt, determined to find the cameras. And so I went up to Larry, our film guy, and I was able to find Larry. the security footage of that of that day. And I see Chris Long, Kendall Langford, and William Hayes. Although <laughs> William still... William still alleges. claims a ledger is like, you can't tell that's me. And I'm like, all right, bro. He's like, he, and you know, will like, they, there's no way in the court of law that would hold up. Like, absolutely. But anyway, you see all three of them stop, look up and acknowledge the camera and then just keep walking. <laughs> well, cause we didn't think like, Larry would happened. dime us out. I like, I can't believe Larry Clerico dimed us out. That was my guy. I will say this. One of the funniest details of the story, which at the time was pretty, it was a harrowing drive to the, to the hotel was all your clothes that I very kindly took out of your car as to not ruin yeah. them were yeah. in the back of my car on the hanger right. hook behind the passenger seat that you were sitting in the entire I was ride. so tired. I had, <laughs> I didn't even so look tired. behind. <laughs> I didn't even look behind. It was dark. And plus I, to be honest, I was just, I didn't think that you would have been a part of that. You know, I thought surely Chris would have my back and not, uh, you know, be a part of these shenanigans. Well, now what I want to do for everybody listening, for the hundreds of thousands of people tuning in at home, uh, I just want to say sincerely that I'm sorry, and I made a mistake, and um, and I hope that you'll forgive me. You've already kind of forgiven me, I feel like, because we've I been forgave you already. Years, I forgave like, you instantly. You're I a thought... real Christian. Some people are not I... into the forgiveness <laughs> yeah. thing. You're a real Christian <laughs> because he almost did nothing. I will say this. Now, the, the the thing that people don't realize is, well, they do realize in this show we've talked about is the crit- the crickets died, and for that, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I would, so looking back, I would have let, I'd rather have you keep my suit in there and all the crickets die and ruin my suit than actually ruin my Audi well, that I had just well, got. Well, think about it this way. Season. It would have, they would have ruined both the suit and the Audi. So I had to save one. Um, How many crickets approximately? 10,000. We, we, we <laughs> traded crickets for tickets because we went yeah. down there to the bait shop on a break in camp. They used to give us like a one hour break that you could go nap in. I'm like, who goes naps for a fucking hour? Okay, like, I can't go to sleep. I'm thinking about the second practice or whatever it is. And uh, so me and William Hayes naturally were bored. uh, And we went down to the beach. We went down to the the, the FedEx. You said, you said, you know, forget James. No, we we (laughs) we needed packing peanuts. We were looking for packing peanuts and we heard crickets in the back. And the the guy at the bait shop that was receiving 10,000 of them walked in. He said, aren't you guys you play for the Rams. We say, we got a proposition for you. Tickets for crickets. Next thing you know, the crickets crawl in James's car and die, which was unfortunate. <laughs> that wasn't in the manual. That wasn't, it, I did not know crickets died and that they smelled terrible. That smell, that smell was pretty ridiculous. Now what, what you're not sharing is that you almost didn't turn the other cheek. No, I, I went and researched how can I, how much would it cost me to ship Chris's Land Rover over to, London. London. So that when we went and played in London, that like his car would be at the Arsenal practice facility and he'd be like, Oh no. And then I thought back and I said, you know what? This is actually dumb. This would actually hurt you more James because Chris was a higher draft pick than you. And his second deal was way bigger than you. So Chris would probably laugh at it and be like, that's cute. I'll send it overnight tomorrow. I would know. I would have been, and it would cost, you know, 
Dude, I'm not sure we could afford schooling for our third daughter if I would have done that. I would have so. hit my knees if you if you actually found a way to ship a full size SUV across the <laughs> pond as retaliation. Because how am I getting it back? I mean, the same way you got it there. I would have been embarrassed in front of Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner was at all our practices that week for some reason. I mean, uh, totally nice of you not to to pull that off, James. One of the best teammates I ever had, uh, and definitely got me lined up uh, with regularity. Uh, appreciate you, James. Laranitis. Don't fuck his name up. Don't wear it out. James, come back again, dude. All right, man. Anytime. You know it. Appreciate you, bud. See you. All right, man.